Welcome into the latest episode of the Five on the Floor podcast. I'm Ethan Skolnick. Of course, we're on the Five Reasons Sports Network. You can find all of our free content, whether it's podcasts, stories, videos, merchandise. That's the only thing that's not free on FiveReasonsSports.com. Spell it out, FiveReasonsSports.com. We've got two new heat shirts on there. We've got about 12 heat shirts, but we've got a We Got Shooters shirt on there, and we have a Bam Giannis 2021 shirt. So, that actually plays into what this podcast is going to be about. But before we get to this particular podcast, I want to tell you about one of the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that is East Coast Public Adjusters, which wants to let you know there's only nine months left to file and open your IRMA claim. So call now before it's too late. If you've got a leaky roof, experiencing plumbing issues, those problems are most likely covered by your insurance policy. So do not settle for less for a free no obligation inspection call east coast public adjusters they've been in business for 31 years that's right since 1988 here's the number again 855 get ecpa that's 855 get ecpa or visit their website ecpaclaims.com their knowledgeable staff is on hand to answer all your questions and we do appreciate you using our sponsors because that's what keeps us going here at five reason sports all right and now on with today's episode. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a Miami Heat and NBA podcast from Ethan Skolnick with Alphonse Sydney, aka Alf954. Brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, Ethan Skolnick back here. No Alphonse City, no Alex Toledo here. Check out our last episode, which we did right after the whole Jimmy Butler, TJ Warren thing against the Indiana Pacers. We'll probably get into that just a little bit today. But first, before we do, I want to introduce our guests. And these two guys, you know them very well. Um, they're on the sports show at night that doesn't invite me on. So that's okay. I still invite, <laughs> I still invite them out here. It's fine. First, uh, first off, first off, yes. wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I, I didn't sign up for this. I signed up to talk to Alf and to Alex. So uh, mm-hmm. I, I think we may have to rethink this whole thing. Well, most people do, Clay. That's true. And then they get me <laughs> because uh, Alex is out driving a lift somewhere, hopefully not passed out. And I'm not exactly sure what Alf does. It has something to do with beauty products. It keeps them on the road all the time. I'm not, again, entirely sure. He was walking his dog last night during our podcast so this so you're basically both getting me and that voice was clay ferraro we also have today will manso you can find him on wplg channel 10 again one of the uh, couple of stations that still does a lot of sports here in this market uh but the one that doesn't invite me on but anyway um i'm inviting we 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 would invite you on but you already went on another station and now no no no. uh, on the competitor station I was a free agent for a long, long time. I was like Michael Beasley, just sitting out there for somebody to sign. I was going to have to go to China to, you know, to, to show my talent again. But it's okay. somebody, somebody scooped me up here, so we won't discuss the other station today, but I'll be on there next week. Um, anyway, Will and Clay are here today, and both of these guys engage on social media, which I know people appreciate. And both of them have a lot of opinions about this Miami Heat team, which as it stands, as we're talking right now, is 27 and 10 on the season. Now, before we get to what they do now, what did you both expect from this team? Because my thoughts on it were pretty clear. I thought they'd be a three seed, uh, but I also had them at 47 wins as a three seed. They're projecting about 59 to 61 wins right now. So they've blown through my expectations. Will, what were your expectations? You know, Clay and I talked about this a lot on the show, and and I know you and I talked about it, you know, when we see each other in training camp and stuff. And I honestly thought this was a 45 win team that could maybe if things fall into place, be a 48 win team, which when you do the math at best was around a four seed. And I thought the goal was always, Hey, you be a four seed, you get home court in that first round. That would be ideal. And that, that really was to me, I don't want to say the up upside because I thought that maybe they'd make a move there at the time before the season, there was still a lot of talk about making a move for a big star type player potentially. So I said 45, 48, four seed is good, but I expected probably fall in range of a five, six seed, which I honestly, given the change and Jimmy coming over, I thought was a fair assessment. All of a sudden, I mean, we see what happened. Now, if the Heat end up a five or six seed in the 45 win range, then something went really wrong in the final 45 games of the season, because this team looks like one of the better teams in the East right now in the NBA. Clay? 
Yeah, pretty much same page. I'd say I was aiming a little higher, I think. And, and part of my opinion changed after I spent a little time around this team. And, and I, I saw kind of that, uh, I, I know it's such a silly cliche, but the sum being greater than the whole of its parts. But I said this a couple of times on the podcast, on our podcast, and it was that there was just a different vibe with this team than you've seen over the last few years. And, uh, you know, I wasn't here for the beginning of the big three. I got here towards the, the end of the big three. I was fortunate enough to cover that. But um, I, I had never experienced a, this kind of group. When I got here with the big three, Chris Bosch pretty much admitted that they were over the regular season. Like they were done with it. They, uh, they got bored. And so you didn't, it wasn't like the, uh, the Harlem shuffle big three. It was, it was just a different vibe. This group, you were able to see it very early on in training camp, but these guys really liked each other. These guys were busting their tails and, and there was just a, a, so all that to say that I was, I was kind of looking at, yeah, three seed uh, as the ceiling, but it wasn't so much like, a whole bunch of things had to fall right for that to happen. It was okay. If this team plays up to its potential and up to its chemistry, that, that, that was kind of possible. Now, you know, I, I think anything less than a three or four and, and yeah, we'd be disappointed. I, I think when we're talking about wins though, I think the one thing that's changed as the season has gone on is we've really seen that the Eastern conference is a lot stronger, I think, than even we anticipated coming in. So, mm. um, whereas, yeah, 47 wins before was, uh, yeah, three seed would be very, very realistic there. Uh, 47 wins now, uh, yep. you may get the six. Yep. And, and so I think that's kind of where things have changed a bit. Yeah, I think you look at the two conferences um, in part because the bottom fell out of some teams in the West, right? Like, so we knew from the beginning of the season the Knicks would not be good. Charlotte would not be good. Cleveland would not be good. Atlanta probably wouldn't be good yet. Detroit likely wouldn't be good, although it was hard to really tell. Now it's clear that they won't be good. Um, and obviously the net people I think thought the Nets would be better, but I expected Kyrie to get hurt, and you knew you wouldn't have Durant. Um, so I, I think what's happened though is in the West you've seen the bottom fall out from Golden State. The bottom fell out from New Orleans, right? Um, you know, Minnesota eventually it fell out after they got off to a hot start. So, I, you know, you look at the East and the West right now, and it really is six teams in each conference, right? I mean, yep. it's not – I mean, even even the West, Utah's gotten hot since they got Jordan Clarkson and built up their bench a little bit. So you're basically talking in the West, the two L.A. teams, Houston, OKC is better than expected. Uh, you know, obviously you've got uh, Denver and Utah. And am I missing something? That's pretty much about it, right? Like, the, I yeah, mean, yeah. Man, that's, that's pretty much it. And you, I mean, you like to your point, you have the same in the, in the East. You have, I mean, we've seen it. The Heat have played all the teams that they're competing against, and they beat most of them except the Celtics. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you, you look at the Pacers team they just beat. That team is going to change come playoff time. I mean, Victor Oladipo is going to come back. We still haven't seen a matchup where the Heat have played them with Malcolm Brogdon. I mean, that's a good team. Mm-hmm. I think that's the kind of team that you face in the playoffs. That's likely a seven-game series. I mean, that's a yeah. very good basketball team. A lot will depend on how old people comes back and how long it takes him to get anywhere close to what he is. But again, you look at the rest of these, I think we've seen the issues with Philadelphia, but I can't sit here and tell you that I think Philadelphia won't be dangerous come playoff time. I mean, they could yep. still figure things out. And yeah, they have issues, uh, obviously, with shooters and, and the consistency of Ben Simmons and all the all the flack Tobias Harris is getting. Uh, Embiid's got to stay healthy. But that's still a very talented team. So when you go through the names we just said in Boston as well, Toronto, they're going to get Siakam back. They're going to be a solid team, obviously, come playoff time. And then we know what the Bucks are. Even, guys, even if the Heat get a two or three seed, this is still going to be, I mean – Unless you're the two seed, if you're the three seed, mm-hmm. it's still going to be a battle to just get out of the first round of the playoffs. Well, Will, though, here's the problem with that, up. though. Will, Will, here's the problem with that. If they get the two seed, they're likely going to get <laughs> Orlando. All <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing. Like, that was the most predictable loss on the schedule they've had so far. Like, you, you could talk yeah, about the back to back in Boston. Help me, Oh, no, no there's no like chance. Well, Pat's, Pat's had uh, wanted Vucevic for years, I think, just to get him off of that team. Like, I, I don't even know if he wants Vucevic for the Heat. It's just, yeah, I mean, between him and Fournier, you knew there were 55 points coming that night. And they probably will end up with a seven. I mean, you look at the, the Nets got Levert back last night. I think that will help. I, I you know, I, I'm not a big Kyrie guy. Uh, we'll see when he comes back and how the, the chemistry works. But they're really a year away um, before really being, you know, significantly competitive. You mentioned Philly, and we'll get back to the Heat in a second. I mean, the thing with Philly is now there's some reports that they want to go get a bunch of guys they've had before, like Elton Brand wants Covington back, and, and that's a possibility. Mm-hmm. I think that team's going to look very different 
by the yeah. trade deadline. Like, like if there's one team that like if Boston makes a move, it's an upgrade move, like to get a big. But with Philly, it just might be to blow the thing up. I don't know. I mean, that it's not a great fit. Any team that gives Tobias Harris a, a max, I mean, to me, no disrespect to Eddie Jones, but Tobias Harris is Eddie Jones. He's a third or fourth best player on a really good team, and but and that's what he should be there. But because they can't. Simmons can't be the guy down the stretch because he can't shoot and you don't know if Embiid's going to play or not. It's mm-hmm. like they're relying on him and Josh Richardson to make plays down the stretch and we know what Josh is down the stretch and I, I, Tobias's numbers have always been good but come on. I mean, you're not fearing Tobias Harris like you were fearing Jimmy Butler. So I, I just think that they've gotten it wrong by letting Jimmy go mm-hmm. and maxing Tobias putting Horford out there when Horford's not really a four, having him play with NB, but I think they're going to look a little bit different. All right, let's get back to the heat with you guys. Um, I think one of the things that's happened now is that the team is a year ahead of schedule, at least. And uh, I agree. based on what we're saying. Okay, and you guys all know how this works. Uh, trans, you know, NBA is basically 99% transaction talk and 1% game talk. Uh, and so... Heat fans are not going to be satisfied now because now they see an East that may be somewhat wide open. There's the other sort of thing here, which is if you can be the team to take down the Bucks, then you might make it more interesting for Giannis to come to you in a couple of years. I mean, after all, that is what Kevin Durant did, right? He left Oklahoma City. They couldn't get past Golden State. They were up 3-1. They lost the series. He went and joined the Warriors. Uh, Can't you know, beat him, join him. Exactly. And I've been pushing that narrative. I know that Giannis is not a huge fan of the city of Miami, but things change. He's obviously a huge fan of, of bands who, and that relationship is developed. And if, and if you're Riley and you're looking at this, you could say to yourself, okay, two birds with one stone here, right? Like we can, if we make a move that gets us to the finals this year, obviously we're way ahead of schedule and we're close closer to a championship now. But secondarily, if we can make that move without sort of giving up the cap space in 2021, we can make ourselves more attractive to a, you know a guy who is going to start getting a lot of heat, you know, no pun intended, for not sure. <laughs> winning a championship in the same way that LeBron did when he was in a bad market uh, or a tough market to win in for his first seven years. So I will ask, I'll start with you, Clay, on this. If you are the Heat, is there any player out there right now that you would jeopardize 2021 cap space for? Well, yeah, I mean, there are, there are guys out there. I think what we don't know is, how available those players would be. But I, I think you, you hit the nail on the head as far as it, it's a, a case by case basis. And, and when you're talking about beating Milwaukee and getting to the NBA finals, the Eastern conference compared to the Western conference is not what it was the last few years where you were like just one or two moves away from contending to get out of the East and then get your head bashed in by golden state. And so I think now, if you're talking about beating Milwaukee, you're also talking about winning an NBA championship, potentially. I I know the West is, you know, you you, you have the Clippers, you have the Lakers, it could be really good. But if you're good enough to beat Milwaukee, it's not like, hey, we're just going to be happy to be in the finals. So um, I think your question is now more one of, is there a player out there that you think will win you an NBA championship and in that case, I, I think you are perfectly willing to sacrifice 2021 cap space if the player is that good. So uh, the players then that, that come to mind are players that at this point are, are not available for you know, our knowledge. And, um, you know, we saw the Yahoo report with Damian Lillard that, that he's not, this is not what he signed up for. Mm-hmm. If you read the report a little bit more in detail, it's kind of more putting the onus on Portland's front office to make some moves to build around Lillard. Now, well, Clay, Lillard Clay, do, Clay, do you know the relationship there? Uh, cause I, cause I don't know if a lot of people know the relationship there. Basically um, the guy before Chris Haynes, I, I know Chris pretty well. Because I, I was in Cleveland with him for, for our, both our first year covering the Cavs, because I kind of had to cover the Cavs when LeBron went there, uh, 20, 2014, 2015. Uh, Chris and I were around each other a lot. The, the reason that Chris got the opportunity to cover LeBron in Cleveland was because of the incredible relationship he developed with Damian Lillard in Portland. Um, he is very close with Dame. Like, they're, it's, not, it's not reporter you know, it's not, re- it's not reporter player. It's they're really good friends. Okay. It's kind of like okay, Jay so and Michael Pearson. Strahan. So, so yeah, if, if he well, wrote that report, he know, it's coming from Dame. Uh, just to be clear on that. So do you think it, I'm, I, yeah. And, and I get that. What I was saying was the way it was phrased. It was more putting pressure on the organization as opposed to mm-hmm. 
uh, Dame saying at this trade deadline, I want out. You know what I mean? Like there's right. the, the so um, look, but but it, the reason why I even bring Dame up. Dame would be a player that I would sacrifice 2021 cap space for because I think he makes you good enough to make a legitimate run at the NBA Finals. Um, is, and, and Drew, so, is, is Drew then? Because I agree with you on Dame, and I'm going to get to Will on this in a second. Is Drew Holiday, if you're taking – because I think Drew is the most likely possibility still. Okay, I, I just no. think if you, so. You don't. You don't. It, it, is that dependent on whether or not he opts into the twenty-seven million in twenty twenty-one or not? Yes, <laughs> and I think you know that's the that's the that's the rub there. And it also it, it kind of depends on what you're giving up as well. And so, look, I think we we all agree that look, unless Milwaukee calls tomorrow and says, "Hey, we want to trade you Giannis for for Bam," that that Bam and Jimmy are the two untouchables. Like, wait, 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 I gotta stop you. You you Dottis or Giannis? Because if they want to trade you Dottis for Bam, the Heat might not make no 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 Giannis no 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 no. (laughs) if 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 Milwaukee were to call tomorrow and say hey we want to trade you Giannis for Bam Giannis for Bam then that like that's the level of player oh you said Miami keep in field of phone you Don I see he said send you Giannis so right. it, yes, it, 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 yes, then, it just Giannis. sounded like Udonis. I'm sorry. That's <laughs> no, no, no. If Milwaukee, so, but, but I think the point is like, I think you have two guys who are untouchable on this roster for, for the most part. Right. And, and so beyond that, then I think you get into that second tier of guys who, because of their play paired with their contracts become assets. And those are guys like Tyler hero. And, and look, this is a very varying degree, but it's, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Kendrick Nunn. Um, so, you know, to me, I don't give up multiple assets, uh, including draft picks, for someone like Drew Holiday. Because it, for somebody who could potentially then also jeopardize your 2021 cap space, because I want to keep those assets in place as best I can, just in case you have a true superstar decide that he wants out between now and, and the trade deadline in, in February of 2021. So mm. those are the, I, it's kind of a sliding scale to me. I think you right. have to look at it on a case by case and say, does this player make us instant championship contender material? So will I go to you on this then uh, he mentioned some guys. I, I think we've all sort of agreed that Bam's untouchable. I, I think the heat decided that this off season, I've heard, the only heat player that I've heard Bam was ever on the table for at any time was Kawhi Leonard last year because everybody was. Um, But the Heat also had some concerns about Kawhi's team, so to speak, you know, the people around him. And, uh, you know, some of those played out, but they, but he also won a championship, you know, before they became a serious issue. I think it worked out for him. It it, it worked out okay. Um, But let's go through the list of guys beyond Bam. And obviously Jimmy's not going anywhere. So Tyler Harrow to me becomes the most interesting after that. Is he untouchable, in your opinion? Or And one guy we're not talking about much is Bradley Beal because they can't trade him this season. They can't trade him until the offseason. But if Washington was to come to you with a package in the offseason and Bradley Beal, let's say Bradley Beal, that, you know, they end up winning 28 games and which is probably what's going to happen. And, you know, they, he, he decides, okay, I do want out. And so, you know, and, and he's got that extension, but whatever. And, and they go to them and say, okay, we'll, we'll have a conversation with the Heat, but it starts with Tyler Harrow. What do, what do you do? I listen. I mean, I absolutely listen. I mean, to answer your question, the simplest ways, I don't think anyone of the Heat is untouchable to get that level of a superstar. Bam is the only one that falls. And again, we take Jimmy out of the equation because he's, you know, you're talking about 1A, 1B when you're trying to build sort of a super team or a little mini super team stars. Jimmy falls into that first star already. You're looking for the for either the one that's above Jimmy, the 1A, or the 1B that kind of goes with him. And I think Bradley Beal, that type of player, falls into it. So outside of Bam, who the way he's developing could kind of be 1C in the equation, yeah, I think you listen. And, you know, to your earlier question, this team in particular now, given what's out there, I don't think needs to go out and try to get someone unless it's someone at that level, which I think we kind of all agree on right now isn't available. I mean, this team, 37 games in as we speak, is the third best team in the NBA, and they haven't done it in a fluky way. I mean, they are legitimately playing a style that wins games, and they still get to the defensive tendencies when when they're consistent. They play the defense they need to get to. We see, I think, 
They're second in the NBA in three-point shooting percentage. Mm -hmm. They've improved their free throw percentage by 8%, which is a huge step for a team that last year was last in the NBA in free throw shooting. This team isn't a fluke. So if you say that to yourself in 37 games, almost at the halfway point, why force things? Why not just see how this team plays out without worrying about, you know, damaging the cap situation for 2021 moving forward. This team is good enough to compete with anyone in the East, in my opinion. If you get a superstar, sure. I just don't think that star is out there right now. All right, let's do this rapid fire. I'm going to give you some names. All right. Tell me if you have any interest at all. Um, And I'll give you my answer after you guys are done. Kevin Love, Mm -hmm. Clay. No. Will? No. No. Yeah, me either. It's not just the contract either. He's not a culture fit. I just I, I covered. No, him in, I, I mean, in he, he, in he, he said he said Jimmy's workouts were for show, and, and Jimmy <laughs> right. said, "Hey, come come yeah. your mother bleeper and do what I do." Like, right? No, it is there. It is there. Yeah. <laughs> right, and, and, and look, obviously, you know, we, there was. I mean, Dwayne was in Cleveland with him too, so I, you know, st- stuff gets known. Um, Victor Oladipo as a target. Uh, long term, how, how do you think that? What because he's he's free in twenty twenty one. What kind of a fit do you think he would be? Will uh, my one A and one B? When you look at post Giannis, and you know you talk about a Giannis is everybody's dream target. Me Oladipo and Donovan Mitchell are the two Heat culture type guys that I would think would be perfect fits for the Heat. Uh, those two guys to me are the Heat culture type players that I could see being here in the future. Clay. Uh, you're running into the same problem that uh, David Lang, our producer, does, that Will and I tend to agree on everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I'll say is I would put Donovan Mitchell a, a step or two ahead of Oladipo. I'm, I'm just a huge fan of Donovan Mitchell in general, and I feel like he's – he's got more room to grow. And, and I think he's somebody who I think uh, he has a little bit more of that it factor compared to, to Oladipo. So I guess as a target, but I think if you're getting to Oladipo and, and granted that Donovan Mitchell, there are some things that have to happen for him to get out of his deal. Um, but I think you're a couple of steps uh, like plan C type of type of area. If you're getting to Oladipo, you know what I found really interesting about the game uh, last night is that, so right after this thing happened with Jimmy and he made the comments and then he went on social media and circled the next Indiana game and tagged <laughs> TJ Warren uh, right after he did that about 10 teammates. I, I mean, I counted, I think eight, but it might've been up to 10 uh, went on social media to back Jimmy and basically mock TJ Warren. Right. And I mean, I mean, look at it. I mean, we wrote a story. It's amazing. Like they all did like that. I mean, they, they, they retweeted his video. Myers Leonard called him a legend. Kendrick Nunn commented on it. Drogic went after him. I mean, everybody. Okay. I'm, which I'm, I'm working on a big piece about Jimmy and his relationship with his teammates <coughs> for Monday. Um, and I'm going to get into some of this and how he won them over, but, and Tyler hero did it too. I mean, they all did it. But the one thing I noticed yeah. too was, so you just had this confrontation on the court between TJ Warren and, and Jimmy and there's Victor Oladipo and Jimmy like yucking it up on the court afterwards, right? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> and so that struck me. Like the whole Heat team was behind Jimmy. Here's Victor Oladipo, the best player on Indiana yeah, yeah. who didn't play on the game. Also with Jimmy, and of course we know the relationship there, uh, Tom Crane guys and obviously the Dwayne connection. So uh, yes. that, that, well, that, there, that plays into it. Isn't there – sorry to interrupt, but isn't there more there? Isn't there uh, – it doesn't Victor have uh, uh, some business interest or something down here in Miami? He does. He's he got does. an apartment. He's, He's got, got an apartment, apartment down here, yeah. Yeah. Okay, He's there you part- go. I mean, whatever it is, like Victor Oladipo in Miami in 2021 has been – uh, like one of those mm-hmm. worst kept secrets for a while now. Oh, in, they loved in, him in the uh, draft. They loved him. Yeah. In the draft. And, and, and I'll tell you too. The other thing is you mentioned a heat culture guy and, and I know this doesn't play in anything, but uh, Victor's one of my five favorite people in the league. He's really, I mean, have you ever dealt with Victor? Like he's just yeah, he, he, very he, likable guy. Very likable. Fun, nice man. Yeah. Very, yeah. very nice. And he, you could tell everyone it's very, where, how do you, you, know, you go in the NBA, a league full of drama. When have you ever mm-hmm. heard anything bad about Victor? Ledico? No. I mean, really, have you ever heard anything yeah, bad about point. Guy, everybody likes that guy. No, no, and, and Bradley Beal too. Actually, I've both of them. I, you know, oh, that's and, and 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 Beal has the relationship uh, with Dwayne also. All right, I want to get to one other topic here because this is a big topic on Heat Twitter, which I know both of you guys kind of duck in of into and duck out of. You know, just because it's <laughs> it can be toxic. It, is it the only? Is it the only? I mean, it's got that hashtag. I mean, did the Heat the only one where their hashtag 
their official NBA hashtag is actually Heat Twitter. Like, I don't see Clippers Twitter or anything like that. <laughs> well, Heat, Heat, Heat Twitter is a special, special place. But the number one topic on Heat Twitter, uh, other than now that Whiteside's gone, is, is Winslow. Mm-hmm. Um, and we saw Justice come back, and he made an impact defensively. I thought offensively it looked like he doesn't know where he fits yet. Uh, yeah. especially now that he's been playing with Dragic in the second unit and Hero and Dragic have developed some chemistry. You know, he really hasn't had a chance to really develop chemistry on the court with Jimmy. He does a lot of the same things that Jimmy does, but not quite to the level that Jimmy does. Uh, what, in, in your view, uh, Will, is Justice Winslow going to be a part of this in a year? And is he going to be a significant part of it? I still think that he believed that, you know, I, I, I will say this though, you know, when we talk about assets and we didn't really mention justice earlier. We talked about Tyler. I still think justice is also an asset. I think other teams look at justice and look at the skill set. You just said, Jimmy Butler, you know, Jimmy was, I want to say a late bloomer, but certainly Jimmy, you know, it took him a few years to figure it out to be at the level he's at now. I think there may be people who identify justice as that type of guy that it just may have taken him a few years. Injuries have certainly been a factor as they have been this year. It's the main reason why he's been out so much. Uh, I think justice is still a core piece of this team. And I still really believe that he think he could be that guy. I also think though, he's one of those assets that if something big came up, his name would be in the conversation and the heat would be willing to move him. So, so when you ask that question, it's a tough one to answer because I think if they can fall in place and have justice, they love his skill set, they love his defense, they love what he provides. But if he is that asset that's part of a package to bring that next superstar, there would be no hesitation in pulling the trigger and making that move. What would you do with him, Clay? The original question, do I see him as part of this this core moving forward like a year from now? Do I see him in a heat uniform? And I No, I don't. And and I think the the problem here is – uh, I think if you guaranteed the Heat that he was going to be on the floor for 70-plus games and they could rely on him, I think he'd, he's absolutely a perfect fit. And, and I think we saw just how missed he was when he was out, and, and especially when he and Goran Dragic were both out because Jimmy was having to do way too much. I remember Spo was, was putting him into the fourth quarter of games with like 10 minutes left, and, and Jimmy was gassed because you didn't have any other playmakers out there. And you know, say what you want about Winslow and, and how, how ugly the shot looked the first couple of years of his career. He really turned into uh, – he was their second-best three-point shooter last year, and he's one of the few guys who can create for, for his teammates on the floor pretty consistently when he's actually in the game. But the problem is the old, you know, the old line is the best ability is availability. And at this point, I, I think there, there is a concern that this is kind of the norm, that you're not going to be able to rely on him consistently throughout the course of the season. And as much as we like to say, oh, the NBA is all the, about the playoffs, it's all about the play, well, you know, Jimmy Butler needs a break now and then. And, and Winslow is the perfect guy to come in and, and spell him if he is consistently available. And unfortunately that hadn't been the case. So I I think if you're talking about, I agree with Will, by the way, that I think other teams view him as a potential asset when you combine him with his contract. And to me, if like, if the, if the Pelicans were to call tomorrow and say, look, we love justice Winslow. And I think there's been some, some feeling out there that the David Griffin is like justice Winslow for a while. Um, That if, if that was essentially all it took, plus filler, and you had a good idea that Drew Holiday was going to opt out uh, Mm -hmm. of that final year of his contract. Like, that's the type of deal I would be willing to make. Um, But I just, I feel like there's going to be a point where they look at this and they say, there's going to be somebody out there, and and it doesn't even necessarily have to be a superstar type player, that we feel like we can rely on to be on the floor more consistently. And and so I, as much as I, I love what Justice brings to the table when he plays, I just I don't see him in a Heat uniform in a year. And and I think that it doesn't even necessarily have to be a, an All NBA level player for them to pull the trigger on a deal. Yeah, I you think this la- all that though. Just one last thing is that mm-hmm. I think this rest of the season is make or break for him. I do agree with that. Yeah. I think. He yeah. has to stay healthy. He has to be this is part of whatever run that is that you're going to make into the postseason. He has to be a big part of it. Well, and he was a big part of what they were trying to do against Philadelphia a couple of years ago. I, I I actually think it may be. Even oh less than yeah. That. I mean, I mean, he showed he's a playoff player. I think they know yeah, that. Sure. I mean, he has the right mentality for it. But I, I actually think Will, it's a shorter period of time. I really think it's the last month. I mean, uh, the next month. I mean, they they got their full complement of players back for basically the first time one month before the trade deadline. 
And I think this next month is critical for them to see how things fit, if he can stay healthy. I can tell you, because I kept getting reports on this, and that's why I was talking about the podcast, I can tell you that inside the organization, there was some displeasure with kind of this last injury, all right? And so I, I know Justice ended up getting back out there Max on the floor. A, 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 lot. a lot. A lot. Okay, a lot. Okay, yeah. there, there was a yeah. lot, okay? I mean, they, they, you know, and, and I that's one of the reasons why I signaled on the podcast I thought this could be a lot longer because there was not a meeting of the minds for a while on – how serious it was, whether it was a pain situation, exactly what it was. I know Justice went and got another opinion. Uh, I know another opinion he got was sort of more discouraging. And eventually, you know, about a few days later, he started tweeting up a storm and he ended up back on the court. I, so I, for now, it seems like it's been solved. But, I, you know, I, I don't know if there's bad taste from it. And again, I think he's I, I agree with both of you. He's got to be mm -hmm. on the floor. All right, we're going to get to one final topic here. But first, both of these guys look great on television. Uh, me, not so much. So I, I've sought out some help. I've sought out some help. I want to introduce you to our newest sponsor, Cervanti Men's Custom Clothier. How frustrating is it to, dress, to shop for dress clothes? You can never seem to find the right fit, the right color, the right style. Maybe you feel like you never know what to wear or how to wear it. Maybe you've got a wedding or a special event coming up or just wear professional attire daily or get invited onto one television station and not another. That's why you have to go see Blanca over at Cervani Men's Custom Clothier in South Miami. Her private showroom is located right across from Sunset Place on Red Road. Cervani has been designing Fine custom-made clothing in South Miami for over 30 years. I'm actually heading down there right after this podcast. Your custom-made suits, pants, shirts, and shoes will fit you just the way you like. Schedule a private consultation with Blanca to start looking your best and get the benefit of a female's perspective on men's fashion. Give her a call. Here's the number, 305-310-2085. That's 305-310-2085. Nothing fits like custom-tailored clothes. Stop buying off the rack. All right. I did not buy these two guys off the rack. They're premium items. Um, Will Madso, Clay Ferraro, going to close with this. This okay. team does not make a move at the trade deadline. Stays intact. I mean, maybe they banish Dion somewhere. Who knows? But, but let's, <laughs> say they stay, let's, let's say they stay intact. Don't add anything. Maybe tweak, you know, maybe sign Chris Silva to the, the full contract or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, what is, I've asked this question, everybody we had on the pod, what is the best case scenario for this team in the postseason? I, I will say Eastern Conference Finals. You know, I still have a hard time envisioning them beating Milwaukee in a seven-game series, but I would love to have the opportunity to get proven wrong and see them shock them. But I, I would say at this point, if they stay healthy and the roster they have, I think most people, and I think even in the organization, would be disappointed that they don't make a real run to the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, I think they feel they've got that type of team right now. Clay? Yeah, that's where I'm at if, if we're talking realistic. I, I will say this. I, I mean, look, we've seen the last couple of years, and I think last year in particular, where just get there and see what happens. And in this case, I'm talking Eastern Conference Finals, where, I mean, let's say, let's say Giannis pulls a hamstring. Game one. And so, you know, if we're, if we're talking about best case scenario, I, I could foresee them getting there and then something crazy happening or them kind of finding the secret sauce to, to slow down a Milwaukee team and then potentially get to the NBA finals. So I'm not, I'm not willing to dismiss the idea that they could get to the NBA finals. So if we're talking best case scenario, anything can happen. But yeah, I think if we're talking realistic, yeah, I think Eastern Conference finals and I just have a feeling that uh, Giannis is gonna gonna make a statement again this year uh, that he couldn't make last year. So, um, but again, this is all assuming that this team is as is, and they don't have a combination of Damian Lillard and Donovan Mitchell and uh, all of these guys. <laughs> yeah. uh, now you're now you're fully heat Twitter because no, no, all of those players yeah. have been added, cap and damned. Let me tell you, let me be pessimistic yeah. Twitter to end it, and I and I hate to end it on this thought, and I said it earlier. It wouldn't shock any one of us if they lost in the first round. It's just, no. I don't think it would. No. It would, and that just says a lot about the East and the structure of it. So that's why I can't sit here and say that you know it's finals or bust because this team, as good as they are, could win 55 games and lose in the first round just the way the conference is set up. Well, I could see it. I could absolutely see them being a three seed and Philly being a, a potentially. I, I don't think Philly's going to drop to six, but for long term. But let's say that happens, I think Philly would be favored in that series by a lot of people. Like I, sure. I still don't believe mm -hmm. there's belief in them. I think a lot of this will have to come down to matchups. I kind of like their matchup against Boston. Um, I, I, I Toronto matchup went a little better than I expected. Remember, the only team at the top of the East they haven't beaten on the road so far is Boston. They beat all the yeah. others, um, and they did. Mm -hmm. They did it without Jimmy. 
uh, against Milwaukee. So uh, they're capable, but you're right. They're, we don't know until they're in it. I think I know how Tyler Hero and Kendrick Nunn and Duncan Robinson are going to perform because we've seen it this year, but you don't know until you get in the playoffs. Teams start preparing for Absolutely. you with an extra day, and then you've got to adjust. Dwayne Wade in his first playoff game, look it up. I think he shot under 20% from the floor. He ended up winning that series on a runner in the lane, okay? so it, But it takes yeah. time. It does not happen always like it did for Dwayne, and even with that, Dwayne had some struggles early. All right, you can follow both of these guys on Twitter at – is it the at Will Manso account we're using, Will? Is that the one? We, we can do the Will Manso, but it, I could give – since we're talking PLG, at Will Manso WPLG. That's my work account where I post videos and stories, and then the other account I just talk to he Twitter and we talk trash. All right. That, that, perfect. And Clay WPLG, you can follow uh, Clay there. Guys, thank you. I hope you appreciated the invite. Hopefully I'll get one someday. Um, also check out our sponsor, our other sponsor, Seltzer Mayberg Law Firm at onecalllegal.com. They got someone there 24 hours a day to handle all your concerns. Make sure you spell it out. O-N-E calllegal.com. They handle immigration, personal injury, driving tickets. They did a great job for that with me um, and just about everything else based in North Miami. Guys, thanks for joining me. Really appreciate it. Our pleasure, man. Always fun. Always. You, you will get that invite. Trust me, you will. All right. Sounds uh, good. Actually, you won't because uh, you're prettier than I am, so that ain't happening. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm going down to Cervani right now. Maybe. I'll, I'll get back to you in an hour. <laughs> All right, Take guys. care, brother. Take care. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports Network.